The Holding Institute has been around in our community since 1880. It originally got started as a school specifically meant to serve children of color that were not allowed into the normal school setting, which it kind of sounds funny or ironic if you think about it because we're a predominantly Hispanic, Mexican-American community, but in those days, Mexican-American children were not allowed in the regular public schools. So that's how Holding Institute started. And then it became a seminary, continued to be a full school, you know, kindergarten through high school. And then it became a community center and to what we are today. The food drive what has been done practically all year. Before COVID, we were serving maybe 50 families. COVID till now, we're probably seeing anywhere between 200 to 300 families every Tuesday, and then two to 300 families every Thursday. Right now we're serving an average of maybe close to 400 households a week just with emergency food. So earlier today, you were looking at someone packaging rice, a 50 pound bag of rice divided into 50 or 40 individual bags, quart sized bags could serve each bag could serve four people. When uh, someone goes to the store and sees a little box of rice, they just see rice. I see people. I see, okay, that little box, that's one pound. How many people could eat from that? That's the way I look at it. Every time I go to the grocery store, I'm, I'm looking at numbers. I'm not looking, <laughs> I'm not looking at the product. So I see a bunch of bananas. Okay, that's a bunch of bananas. There's six bananas in there. What if I cut each banana in half, and there's kids? So that means I can give a snack to twelve kids instead of just six. Everything like that, you know. That's just the way we are. Ahorita pues estamos colaborando para las personas necesitadas de la tercera edad. Y aparte de eso, estamos, Dios ha bendecido este lugar, tocante, tocante también la inyección, tocante el COVID. Para personas de tercera, personas de la tercera edad, y ha sido una bendición. We have partnered up with the city of Laredo, the fire department, with Chief Hurd and Richard Chamberlain from the health department. And they've, they've come and they've provided vaccines for seniors and with people for, with underlying conditions. And the people that we serve, are the people that don't have an internet at the house, don't have internet at the house. They don't have a cell phone, or they don't have a way to get to the clinic. So they decided to bring the vaccine to where it's needed. Vine después cuando la vacuna del flu, aquí también me la dieron. Pues es participar en, para que todos eh, se pongan la vacuna, ¿verdad? invitarlos a que todos se la pongan, ¿verdad? This year, we've been receiving a lot of like immigrants. Mm -hmm. So like that's been our main focus. So we've set up tents and stuff because we can get 15 to 30 people a night that stay here just for a couple of days. And... One of the other services we do right now is we're starting to see a lot of asylum seekers. Asylum seekers are people who are trying to come into the US from other countries, from Honduras, Guatemala, San Salvador, and what they do is they're legally trying to come into our country through asylum. And we're getting a lot of kids, we're getting a lot of uh, family units. People think, or people say that it's a, a migrant issue. This is not a migrant issue. This is a humanitarian crisis, not a migrant crisis. They get here and they get here beat up. The migrants get here. And they get here having to walk from Honduras. And they have to cross Guatemala. They have to cross Mexico. And all along that journey, which is usually about a month, they're walking, they're on trains, they're in danger of getting kidnapped, raped. The worst of the worst. And then they have a child. 
So once they get to us, it's like if God put them here so that we can help. En eso y nos están ayudando en la comida, en el refugio, pues, porque no tenemos dónde estar ahorita. Eh, digamos, lo que uno necesita, eh, cepillo de dientes, eh, ropa. Lo necesario. Sí, lo necesario, pañales para la nena, cosas así, leche. The other thing that we do is help homeless. Um, because of the pandemic, there's a lot more homeless now. And a lot of people think of homeless like the ones you see in the streets that are drug addicts or that are, you know, um, begging for money and stuff. That's one kind of homeless. Right now, what we're seeing is a lot of homeless that had a job, but because of COVID lost it. And all of a sudden, the family lost a house or lost an apartment, and now they're living on, in their cars. So we help them as well. So, so we help a lot of people um, through, through, through holding. We, um, it's like a home away from home from a lot of people. That, that to me personally is the best reward we can get. It's just seeing the change we do. And everybody does. The people that donate, the people that come volunteer, they change lives. They may not know it. To them, it might be just a new community hours or whatever, right? But they're actually changing lives. You touch somebody. Every time you come here and you donate, every time you come and give your time, every time you come and you give your talent, if the, you are helping to change someone's life. Uh, we want to make sure that no one leaves this place empty, you know, physically, mentally, uh, you're not going to walk away from here hungry in any sense of the word. It's our responsibility to help your neighbor, right? There's a, a verse in Matthew that is often quoted that says, whatever you did to the least of these, you did for me. So, I mean, look around you. These people are the least of these. And people in our community, maybe your neighbor, maybe someone you know, is in that least part of the factor. And... I mean, we got to help. And if you're, if you're listening and you're thinking that I don't have anything to give, you know, I just lost my job, I just did this. Okay, that's fine. We're here to help you as well. But everyone has something to offer to someone else, it, be it a bottle of water. Well, I don't have a bottle of water. You got a glass? You got water in your kitchen? You can offer water. Uh, a small box of rice uh, or even, you know, if, if, if I reach into my pocket right now and say, man, I, I got nothing. Uh, you do have something to offer, and that is hope, right? I can offer from my own words, from my own testimony, and share with you that spirit of hope that can hopefully get you past wherever you're at right now. Because I believe, and I think most people believe, there is something greater than, than what we are today, than where we're living in today. I know there's a lot of chaos in the world. I know that. We're in the middle of COVID. We're in the middle of all these things. That's okay. There's something better than what you see in front of you. There always is. You just got to take the time to look.